Welcome back, everybody. In today's video, we're going to be using the intersect function to calculate returning customers. Intersect is a very powerful function that essentially allows you to take two tables of data and figure out which values are common in each tables, or which values overlap, or which values intersect. Perfect for something like calculating returning customers. So without further ado, uh, let's go ahead and sketch this thing out, shall we? Uh, so we're going to start with a very simple data model here where we have one table in our data model called contract where we've got uh, contract information. So we, uh, I don't know what we do, but apparently we have contracts. And for each contract, uh, we've got the customer ID, the customer that you know we have the contract with, uh, the year that we have that contract, and the amount that the contract is for. And we can basically ignore this here. I kept it because, uh, I don't know, it seemed like a good thing to have. Really, the things we're going to care about uh, is the customer ID and uh, the year that we uh, is associated with each one of those customer IDs and contracts. Okay, so what we're going to uh, work towards is this number here, too, which is the number of returning customers. Now, us as smart humans, uh, we can look at this table here, and we can see uh, Andreas only had a contract in 2021. Carla had three contracts, uh, two in 21 in 2021 and one in 2022. So Carla is a returning customer. Don uh, had a contract in both 21 and 2022. So Don's a returning customer. Edward had uh, two contracts, but they're both in 2022. So Edward's not returning because to be a returning customer, we would have had to have a contract in the previous year. And Fiona just has the one contract in 22. So uh, us smart humans, we know that there are two returning customers, but how do we get DAX to figure that out for us, right? By the way, uh, as of the time of me recording this, it is currently 2022. If it's 2023, just imagine that it's 2022. The video will make a whole lot more sense. Okay, so uh, what we're going to use uh, to, to generate that two number there is a measure that looks something like this. Now, uh, if you're fairly new to DAX, this might be kind of scary. There's a lot of stuff here, but it's actually a lot simpler than it looks. And we're going to sketch this out in a second, then hopefully when I do so, you'll see some of that simplicity, right? But but uh, for what it's worth, this is just a returning customer's calculation. I'm going to use a couple uh, variables to uh, get some information about my customers, and then I'm going to go generate uh, a calculation that will produce this number two right there, okay? So uh, if we think about this measure here, returning customers, running on a actual page in PBA in a, uh, in a Power BI report, we're going to imagine that uh, no slicers or anything like that are selected, right? And we're going to do that basically for simplicity. So because uh, nobody's clicked on anything in slicers or set any pageable filters or anything like that, the initial filter context that uh, this measure is going to run in is going to be completely empty, which is another way of saying there's just no filters. So when we're sketching out the, the way we get this number two, we're going to assume that we start with no filters or in, in, no filters in place. Okay. So, okay. So let's imagine that we've got an initial filter frame here where we have no filters in place because nobody's clicked on anything in slicers, right? So how do we get uh, to that number? Well, we've got all this stuff here and it's, it's a little overwhelming. So what I want to do is I want to, uh, well, actually, first, just to be really clear, right, uh, this stuff here, the the formula for the measure is what's going to run in this filter frame here with uh, no filters. So just to be really, really clear about that, when we type in a formula and a measure, uh, and to get a number, what we do is we run this formula within a particular uh, frame, which has a, a filter context. And since this filter context is empty, we're going to run this code right here uh, with no filters in place. Okay. I'm sorry, I got ahead of myself there for a second, but I think I'm caught up now. So uh, when we run this, there's all this stuff in here, and it could be a little bit intimidating. So what I want to do is kind of just start by start by just making all this stuff go away. And before we worry about the code, I just want to, uh, well, what I want to do is this. I want to think in tables for a minute, right? So you, you often hear me say, hey, if you want to get good at Dash, you need to get good at thinking in tables. Or another way of saying the same thing is that you need to develop your table vision. All I mean by that is uh, when we're working with DAX, DAX is a language that works and thinks in tables. And therefore, when we're imagining what we need the code to do or what it's going to do, we should be thinking about the tables that are involved in our process. So it, it, basically what I'm getting at here is to calculate the returning customers. We want to think in terms of what tables do we need to calculate returning customers? And also, uh, what are we going to do to those tables uh, to get that final answer? So uh, what are we going to do in here? Well, here's how my, my mind works. 
if I knew that I needed to calculate returning customers, the first thing I would do is I would say to myself, I'm going to start by getting a table of the current year's customers, right? And so we'll generate a temp table uh, that looks like this that has all the customers for the current year. Remember, uh, I'm recording this in 2022. So if we look at just 2022, uh, that's going to be Carla. It's going to be uh, Dawn. I'm sorry, Dawn right there, that contract. It's going to be Edward and it's going to be Fiona, right? So we'll get a table, a temp table, that has all of the customers for the current year, right? Then uh, next what we're going to do is uh, similarly, we're going to get a table with all the customers for last year, 2021, right? So next we'll get a table that has all the customer IDs for 2021. So that'll be Andreas, it'll be Carla, and it'll be Dawn. We'll get that temp table right there, right? And if we have a temp table that has this year's customers, the current year's customers, and we have a temp table that has last year's customers, uh, the next thing we would do is by some process, we would do something, right, to figure out uh, who's in both tables. So we would take the table from last year, the table from the current year, and figure out which customers are in both tables. And if we just kind of look at these, we can see, well, it's Carla and it's Dawn that are in both tables. And so if we had some process by which we could take these two tables here and spit out a table that just had the common values or the overlap values or the intersect values, uh, we would have a table with all of our returning customers. And from there, all we would need to do is uh, just simply uh, count how many rows are in this table, right? So before I wrote any code, this is the kind of thing that I would imagine in my head. I would need uh, these tables. And then when I had these tables, I would somehow combine them together to get this table. And then I just count it, right? So before I wrote a line of code, this is what I would imagine in my head, okay? So uh, with that in mind, let's actually go uh, sketch this thing out properly and see sort of how we write it, okay? All right, so the very first thing we're going to do in our, calcul in our measure here is uh, we're going to use the calculate table function, right? Now, you've almost certainly used calculate before. It's the most powerful function in the DAX language. Calculate table is sort of the sibling of calculate, uh, and it works the exact same way as calculate, except that uh, the, the answer that this thing is going to spit back has to be a table rather than a number or a text string or something like that. Uh, but just like calculate, the most important thing that it does is it will create a frame within a frame. So for our initial frame out here where we had the filter context being empty, what calculate table will do is it will create a frame within that frame where the filters are different in some way. Specifically, they're going to be different because we're going to add a filter for contract year equals 2022. So notice out here the filter context is empty, yet within this frame, the filter context has one filter, uh, a table, for uh, contract year equals 2022, right? If you've heard me talk about DAX before, you know, I, I'm very fond of saying in DAX, everything is a table, including filters. And so here in the filter context, when we've got a filter for uh, 2022 that year, uh, it's actually a, uh, a temp table, right? Okay, <clears throat> so uh, folks that have listened to me before also have probably noted uh, that this particular form of calculate table where I say contract year equals 2022, this line right here is kind of a shortcut version of writing something a little bit longer, but I'm actually okay with that because in this video, I don't really want to focus on that. I want to focus on the tables that we're going to create and what we're going to do with them. So for now, we're just going to say when we type in calculate table, uh, ignore argument one for the moment, and uh, argument two is year equals 2022, all we're doing is creating this new frame where we've got that filter for 2022 in there, right? Okay, so uh, now that we've got that new filter frame with the new filter context, now we can determine what are we gonna do inside that frame? And that is defined by whatever we type in here for argument one. So instead of a couple question marks, uh, which won't do anything, we're instead gonna do this, right? We're gonna do uh, values contract cust ID. So argument one of calculate table, just like argument one of calculate, is the new filter formula or the formula that we want to run inside of this new frame we created. Uh, I will refer to it as a sub formula because it's a smaller formula within this larger formula, okay? So whatever we type in here for argument one of calculate table, that is the new filter formula to run inside this frame, okay? So inside this frame, what are we gonna do? We're gonna uh, do this, we're gonna take the values of the customer ID column and the contract table. Okay, so let's see what that looks like. Let's see what that looks like. Okay, so uh, the values function is a snapshotting function, which means it gets values, uh, well, <laughs> gets values. It gets uh, data out of uh, a table in the data model. So what the values function do, does is we point it at a column in the data model, 
and it will bring us all it will give us back all the distinct values as a temp table right now if we notice here uh currently we've taken the values function and the first argument in there and the only argument in there is the name of the column we want it to go take the snapshot of in the data model specifically it's the customer id column in the contract table or maybe the the full name of that column is contract cust id by the way that column is right here contract cust id uh, in Power BI, when you look at, at a table in the data viewer, they'll just show you the sort of short names of the columns. The long name of that column is contract cust ID, and this is what we want values to go get the values out of. However, uh, values, this particular snapshotting function, is going to pay attention to the filters in the filter context. If we had run values out here in the outer frame, we'd go get all the customer IDs, but because we're running it here inside this inner frame, it's going to pay attention to... I'm sorry, <laughs> pointing at customer ID. It's going to pay attention to, it's going to pay attention to this filter in the filter context. So when the values function goes to get those values in this column right here, it's not going to see everything. It's just going to see the 2022 values, right? So the snapshotting function will skip these rows here. It will just see that row, that row, that row, that row, and that row, the 2022 rows, all the 2021 rows, last year's rows, it's not going to see. So what does the value snapshotting function uh, produce after it does this? It'll produce a temp table that looks like this, right? This is going to be a temp table that has all of our 2022 customers. It's based on the customer ID column and contract. It is four rows by one column, and it looks like this. Maybe that's the more important part. Maybe I should have led with that, right? So this temp table that uh, this uh, bit of code here produced is going to have the values Carl V, Don R, Edward F, and Fiona, right? These are the customers for the current year, okay? So uh, now that we've got those, this is actually the final answer. Uh, calculate table is going to return this, but what is it going to return it to? Well, um, we're going to actually, for the moment, what we're going to do, let's move our eyes over here, we're going to take that temp table and put it in a variable, right? Uh, the reason being is it's just going to keep our code a little bit cleaner. So when I type in VAR, I'm saying uh, go create a variable called VR customers underscore CY. CY is for current year. And we're going to take that temp table, just stick it in a variable just uh, so we could pull it up later on. So what does that look like out here? Right. We take that temp table and we put it in this box right here, this variable. Okay. Because we're going to use it later. Okay. Now, uh, the next thing we're going to do, since we've got a temp table that has our customers for this year, let's go get uh, uh, some uh, customers for last year, right? And how are we going to do that? Well, it's going to be very, very similar. We're going to use calculate table just like before, which will create a uh, frame within a frame, right? Now, notice we're calling calculate table out here, so it'll create a, f a second frame within this outer frame. And what's that frame going to look like? Well, up here, we asked to add a filter for 2022 right there. Down here, we're going to add a filter for 2021, okay? Because we, he, inside this box, inside this frame, we want to get the 2021 customers. Okay, so uh, calculate table creates this uh, filter frame right here, a frame within a frame, wherein we have a new filter context with uh, year equals 2021. So what are we going to do in there? Well, that's defined by argument one of calculate table, which uh, just like before is going to be values, Values contract cust ID, the customer ID, right? Uh, which, by the way, is the exact same uh, ar argument one as we had before, right? So we're going to take this bit right here. This is going to become our new filter formula for this new inner frame, right? Just like before. Uh, but this time, when we run it, it's going to run with a new filter in place. Up here, it ran with a filter for 2022. In here, it's going to run with a filter for 2021. So let's see what that looks like, okay? So the values uh, function, again, uh, it is a snapshotting function, right? We're pointing it at uh, contract cust ID, right? That column right there, which is, by the way, just like before, it's that exact same column. Uh, but, but this time, the snapshotting function runs with this new filter in place. So the rows that are visible to that values function, that values function are going to pay attention to this 2021 filter, and we will only see the 2021 rows. We're going to see a row for Andreas. Uh, two rows for Carla and one row for Dawn. So what is that values uh, function going to produce? It's going to produce a temp table just like before, but this time it will produce a temp table that has the 2021 customers. Still going to be based off of the contract customer ID column. This time it's going to be three rows by one column, and it's going to look like this. It's going to have Andreas, Carla, and Dawn, right? 
just like before, the duplicate values uh, get removed, right? So we just have all the unique values for the customer ID column given the filters that are in place. So this temp table right here is the customer's last year. Uh, and just like with this bit of code where we stuck that in a variable, we're going to take this and stick it in its own variable. This time the variable is going to be called uh, VR customers LY for last year, right? VAR creates the variable. This is the name of it. VR customers underscore LY. And the equal sign says, uh, put all this stuff into that box. So all the stuff that gets produced right here, it's going to get pushed into that box right there or that variable, right? Hey, uh, Brian, is there something special? Uh, I noticed when you name your variables, you put VR in front of customers. What does that do? Does that unlock some special functionality? Uh, no, it just makes it easier for new folks when they're looking at code to be able to identify the variables. They all start with VR in my code. Also, uh, when you're typing out DAX uh, and you have a lot of variables, it allows you to very easily, if you want to get a list of your variables, just type in V and R, and your little IntelliSense will ignore all the functions, which none of them start with VR, and just give you a list of your variables. That, that's why I do that. Okay, <laughs> so after all that, uh, we've got two variables, VR customers CY and VR customers LY, that respectively have our temp tables of this year's customers, or current year's customers, and last year's customers. So what are we going to do with it, right? Well, now uh, we're going to use our return statement here to say, hey, we've defined all the variables that we need to define. Let's go actually return our final answer. And how are we going to get our final answer? Well, we will do, we will do the following. We're going to go grab the values in our boxes and our variables. We're going to go grab the temp table that's in VR customers underscore LY and the temp table in VR customers CY, and we're going to put them into, and grab those values, right? And we're going to put them into the intersect function, right? What is the intersect function going to do? Well, it's going to give us the answer we want is the short version of it. So the intersect function, the intersect function is a uh, function that accepts uh, temp tables, two of them, right? And what it'll do is it'll take those two temp tables, compare the values in them, and give you the intersection of them, which is another way of saying the common values or the overlap values, right? Uh, in this example, which customers are in both tables? Here's last year's table. Here's the current year's table. Carla and Don appear in both tables. Andreas only exists last year, and uh, Edward and Fiona only exist for the current year. So in terms of which values exist in both years, it's Carl and Don. So what does intersect produce? Well, it, intersect, it produces a temp table uh, that has just those two values or a temp table of the returning customers, right? Returning customers, again, based on contract customer ID. This time it's two rows by one column because we've only got Carla and Don, the only two customers that uh, had contracts with us both last year and this year, okay? At this point, everything is super duper easy. All we got to do is take this temp table right here. And uh, what are we going to do with it? Well, we're going to just count how many rows are in it, right? So the count rows function will take this temp table right there, right? And it'll say uh, one, two. And then it will then produce the number two, which is, by the way, our actual final answer. That's how we got that returning customers equals two right there, okay? So uh, this intersect function, you can do it, you can use it for all kinds of stuff, but most of the time it is most commonly used for, well, basically this, where you've got returning customers or you've got some two different periods or two different maybe geographies. Maybe you've got a list of customers uh, in, I don't know, Florida, and you've got a different list of customers in New York, and you want to know who's in both. Well, you can get the two lists and you can intersect them, and it'll give you those values, and you can count it or do whatever you want with it. So uh, this is a really uh, powerful function. Also, it's a really good example of a function that allows you to uh, sort of think in tables, right? We could say, hey, in order to do this, we had to get the two tables, the customers for the current year, the customers for last year, and then perform some set operation in them, find the common value, stuff like that, and then get our final temp table and count it. Uh, so there's a lot of stuff you could do uh, with this intersect function. It's a great example of uh, thinking in tables. Uh, and with that, we're all done. So I sure do hope uh, that was helpful. And I will see you folks in the next video.